uh, in our vectors topic on the equations of planes. So this is example 12. What we're going to have a look at is first of all how we kind of explain or define the equation of a plane and then obviously how to calculate it. So this is a kind of new part of our course because we've thought before in two dimensions and three dimensions about equations of lines. That's a uh, now being a fairly established thing in our mathematical knowledge. Not so much equations of planes. A plane, first of all, you've got to understand what that would be. It's a, it's a surface. Imagine it's basically a, a, a surface going through space. We might think of it, the surface of a, a desk as being a big flat surface. Well, if you were to expand that infinitely in every direction, um, it would represent a plane. But of course, planes aren't always horizontal. Uh, they can be vertical, they can be oblique, they can be going through at any angle. So we can basically define a plane as being a flat surface in space on which a straight line joining any two points on it would wholly lie. Think about that. So in other words, if you think about a line in space and if you were to expand the thickness of that line um, out the way, uh, in a, each direction, then you would make a plane rather than just a line. Okay, so it's basically like a kind of sheet of, of think of it of a sheet of perspex or plastic uh, going in any direction and uh, it, across a room, uh, that would be a plane. So we can think about planes intersecting lines, we can think about planes intersecting uh, planes. So what we've got to do is to uh, first of all, visualize what a plane is, and very often in my diagrams, I represent them by parallelograms. So that's supposed to be like a, a flat surface going away in a bit of three-dimensional perspective. Okay, so uh, when you see a parallelogram in my uh, diagrams, that's meant to represent a flat surface. And in this case, I've got three dots on it, uh, three points, A, B, C. I think we could call that plane A, B, C, although we tend not to use the letters, but effectively these points all lie on the same plane. Okay, so we can actually represent just like the equation of a line can be represented in different forms, we can also represent the equation of a line in three forms, and I've got them uh, kind of written down here. Interestingly, uh, they're actually the same kind of names as uh, equations of our lines. So we've got vector form, we've got Cartesian form, uh, or symmetric form, and parametric form. And in some ways, they, 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 you might think that they, they look similar. They, they, there's a little bit of a difference between planes and lines. Uh, and oddly enough, the, the, the parametric form of the equation of a line, which is really useful, is actually the least useful form of the equation of a plane. And we'll come to that later, but uh, it's a kind of side uh, form, actually. The most important forms that we're going to use are effectively vector form and symmetric or Cartesian form. Okay, So let's uh, have a look at those two forms because they're very close to each other and that's why they're kind of interchangeable. So let's have a look at how we might define a plane. And we can do that starting off by vector form, sometimes called scalar product form. Um, and that is this. We, the definition would be that there are two vectors that lie on a plane and we're going to call the plane pi, interestingly. We often use the, the Greek symbol pi to represent a plane. Um, so there are two vectors on the plane, uh, and one is uh, vector A and one is vector R, which in this case they're, they're normally going from some origin point on the plane. But we, have, we need to think about two vectors on the plane. Okay. Now, it stands to reason that if um, we create a perpendicular vector to both vector A and vector R, then this vector is perpendicular to the whole plane, and we would call that the normal vector. Uh, you may have come across before the idea of something like in physics, the normal vector is perpendicular uh, in direction. Okay, so our normal vector N is perpendicular to the plane, it's also perpendicular to those individual vectors. Okay, um, what we can then say is stands to reason that this is true, 
uh, that if n is perpendicular to any points on that plane, then there exists a vector um, e to r, uh, which is perpendicular to n. So we can say that uh, the normal vector um, dot the ar vector, so we've got our scalar product n dot ar has to equal zero because we know that ar and n are perpendicular. Okay, so the idea then is that we can then use the uh, position vectors r minus a and we can multiply that out and we get an equation that looks like this n dot r minus n dot a equals zero and lastly we can rearrange it so that we end up with the equation n dot r equals n dot a. Now let's just remind ourselves of what each of these uh, uh, kind of vectors are. n is the normal vector to the plane and that's a, a, a kind of fixed value. We, we know what that's going to be. a represents, and I did define it in the blue writing here, a represents a fixed point on the line. Okay, on the plane, sorry. So we need to know a point on the plane. r is a variable point, just like in the equation of our line, r basically represents uh, the point x, y, z. That's the, the variables that we need to keep in our equation of our plane. So A, we need the numbers for, and R, we use x, y, and z for. So that's R in this final equation is the, is the thing that doesn't change. Okay. So in other words, if we know vector n and we know vector A, we can use a scalar product and we can come up with some uh, form of an equation to represent the plane. Okay. Now you notice that, um, as it, the wee green text says, n dot a will actually work out in you, as a, a number scalar product, and that will produce some constant value k. Okay. So, when we write down as a final, n dot r equals k, some constant k, which is calculated from n dot a, then that is the equation of our plane in vector form. Okay. Now we're going to a wee example of that uh, shortly, but I want to just quickly take you on then to uh, the development of that into what we call uh, symmetric form or Cartesian form. And what we can say here is that we start off with the uh, vector form here, n dot r equals k, and all we really do is we're actually going to substitute instead of the vector n and r, we're going to re recognize the fact that vector n has uh, component values, which in this case, whatever uh, a, b, c will basically say, and we introduce the our variable kind of vector x, y, and z, and if we find the scalar product of those two quantities, we're going to end up with an equation that looks like that and the equation of that plane we're going to know the values for a b and c in other words we're going to end up with an equation that might look something like 2x plus 3y minus z equals 3 and that might be a typical equation of a plane that's the symmetric or cartesian form of a plane and it's much more common the, uh, than the vector equation as i'll show you um, and so what does the equation actually mean remember that the equation of a plane is simply a mathematical rule such that if a, a point x, y, and z satisfies this equation, it lies on that plane. Okay, So any point that lies on the plane will make that equation true if we substitute in its three coordinates. Okay, That's a quick overview of the kind of theory behind it. Let's look at example 12. So this asks us to actually find the equation of a plane in both vector and Cartesian form. So the information that we've got is that the plane passes through a point, negative 1, 2, 1, and it has a normal vector of 1, 3, negative 2. Now just to uh, help to visualize that, I tend to draw diagrams all the time, and I would always recommend that you do. So here's my uh, three-dimensional plane. I know that there is a point on the plane 
negative 1 to 1. And I know that that plane has a normal vector, a vector which is perpendicular to it. We're calling that N. And we know that N has a component I, or sorry, 3. We know that n has the com uh, components 1, 3, and negative 2. And we know that, say we'll call that a, point a, well we can say that a has the components negative 1, 2, 1. So I want to find the equation of the plane. Well, if we want to find the equation of the plane in vector form, then we're going to start with the idea of n dot a equals n dot r. And what we can do is we can calculate n uh, dot r. So we can say that, uh, oh, let's try and get it the right way around, n dot r equals n dot a. This is the uh, scalar product for which I have my values for n and a. So we can say that n dot a is equal to 1, 3, negative 2, and a negative 1, 2, 1. The scalar product of that is negative 1 plus 6 plus negative 2, which gives me a total of 3. So in other words, we're saying that n dot r equals 3. Now we're going to keep r as it is, and for n, well, we don't usually, if we're doing it in vector form, we don't usually write it in component form. What I would write down would be something like this, r, and we put in n as in unit vector form, i plus 3j minus 2k equals 3. And that r, of course, should have a little dot in front of it, r dot. Okay. Now that is, in that form there, the way we leave it there would be the equation of the plane in vector form. It's kind of, it, it's functional, but um, it's just almost that sense of, well, why bother writing it out in unit vector form? Can we not take it one more step on? And that was why the development of the symmetric or Cartesian form came into play. So we could say that the equation of the plane in Cartesian form would be at the same time as we're trying to find the uh, n dot a, which we did over here. All we need to do is to recognize that n dot r equals 3. So why not just put in uh, the components of n, which is 1, 3, negative 2. We'll introduce the components of the vector, this point r, which is x, y, and z, we can say that's 3. And if we do the scalar product on the left-hand side, we get x plus 3y minus 2z equals 3. And there, we have the equation of the plane in Cartesian form. It's much more succinct. Uh, it's much easier to use algebraically later on, and that's why it's the most common method of expressing the equation of the plane. Okay. Both of them technically are, are represent the same plane, uh, but one is just, as I said, a wee bit easier to manage than the other. Okay, so that's uh, example 12. That's the start of it. We've got uh, plenty of examples uh, coming on about using the equations of the plane and how we can find the, the equation of the plane when we don't have all this information spoon-fed because, of course, we don't always know what the normal vector is. We have to work it out. So example 13 is going to go that way. And we'll also have a real look at um, a parametric form just so that you know how to do that. Okay, so uh, on with the equations, uh, with the examples, and you can practice this too.